Hey everyone. Happy Thursday. Do you want to say hi to everyone, Miss Butters? Miss Butters? Huh? Your breath is kind of stinky. <laughs> hey. Oh my goodness. All my friends are here. Hey, Lauren. Hey, Kip. God, my eyes are going. Hey, Kim. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Chaz. What's up? Hey, Linda. What's going on? Cynthia. Oh. Oh, happy birthday, Cynthia. Yay. Oh, my goodness. Hello, everyone. Miss Butters, you want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> hey, guys. So it's a Thursday. So Miss Butters is home. She usually goes to daycare Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So she's here today. And I've lured her into my room. Okay. All right. With the promise of a bully stick. <laughs> so that's why she's like staring at my vanity very intently. Oh, I know. I know. But you have to play nice first. Hmm? You have to play nice first. Do you want to say hi to everyone? <laughs> hi. Hi. So I think some of you have asked me like what breed Miss Butters is. And I always forget to mention it. But she is half French Bulldog, half Boston Terrier. <laughs> Oh, Golden Casa. Hi from Green Valley. Hello. I was just there this morning. <laughs> hello, hello. All right, I'm going to put you down and you can get your bully stick. Okay? Hmm? Is that okay? <laughs> okay. Okay. There you go. And for being such a good girl. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> hey, guys. Oh, I feel like I haven't live streamed in a while. I think the last time I did this was when Mona was in town and it's always different when someone else is here. It's, I mean, it's just a different dynamic, but it was so much fun with her, but I feel like I haven't done this just by myself. I think since Mishmas, is that right? It's like New Year's Eve. Anyway, it's the, uh, it's nice to be back on live stream. Um, I have absolutely no agenda <laughs> today. I just wanted to catch up with you guys. I just missed you guys. Um, hello. Hello everyone. Oh, thank you. Oh my gosh, we have Korea in the house. Hello, Chai Wan Lee. Hi. Hi from Boston, Miami. Oh my goodness. Long Valley, New Jersey. Hello, everyone. Toronto. I love Toronto. No, pi <laughs> no pizza. No mukbang today. Um, any plans to get the Chanel La Fleur collection? I did order it. I ordered it today. So I'm like, <sighs> I'm just, I'm like always in too much of a rush and I see stuff on my mobile and I'm so disorganized. So my first, I'll say this, my first order, I ordered the Rosy Glow Drops. I was just really curious about those. They look like a liquid highlighter, which I don't think Chanel does often. So I was like, well, let me, let me check these out. I got one quad, the one that had the grays in it because I thought, oh, the one with the pinks and the purples looks very similar to like other stuff that I've gotten or will be getting. So I was like, let me hold off on that. And then I got um, the like gloss, the eye gloss. So I got those three things. Then I didn't realize, but a new kind of limited edition blush came out with this collection. So I went back online, I ordered the blush. So that is coming also. And then I went to the strip today to meet up with her friend for lunch. And she was like, let's stop by Chanel. I was like, Let's. So in store, I swatched uh, the pink purpley quad and I was like, this is really pretty. So I picked that up too. A video is coming for sure. I'm going to hope to get that up. What's today? Thursday. So Friday, tomorrow I have a trying, um, no, not a, tr do I have a trying? Yeah, I have a trying new makeup video going up tomorrow. I have a Viseart edit palette going up um, Saturday. So maybe this will go up on Sunday. So keep an eye out for that. Um, <gasps> Abby Bliss White. Hello. Oh my gosh. Laura Bertani is here. My very, very good friend, Laura Bertani is here. Everyone say hi to Laura because I have so many things to say. So I think you guys have heard me mention me going to Atlanta and that's where I went at the beginning of this month and, um, and how we just sit around and we just like eat and we just watch TV and this beautiful friend of mine just cooks and bakes and cooks and bakes. And she is like, like professional level, that's Laura Bertani right there. That is the woman. And she is starting a little cooking slash baking 
cooking blog, YouTube channel. I will definitely let you guys know when that comes up because she is phenomenal. She'll take a recipe and she'll kind of like tweak it and just make it so perfect. Yeah, I will definitely let you guys know when that um, pops up. Um, Abby Bliss White is here. She is one of my favorite YouTubers here. Hi, Abby. It's so good to see you. Um, so, <laughs> yes. Hi, Laura. Hey, Alyssa. How are you? Um, so, have you seen the new Hermes lip collection? Yes. Yes, Emily. I'm very excited for that. Um, oh, I love you too, Abby. Um, oh, my gosh. Good morning. So, it's morning over in India. Um, one of my oldest friends from New York City, she just flew to India on Tuesday. So, I think she's there. She's like deep into yoga. So she's going for some like teacher training over there. Um, super excited. So I've got a friend over in India right now. Um, got to try them out. So, okay. Uh, okay. Sorry. I'm like, I'm trying to read like a lot of comments all at the same time. The Mac blushes look super up your alley. They just arrived today and they're right here. So, well, I just flashed my address. So ignore that. <laughs> um, okay. I also wanted to, if anyone was interested, I do have the Viseart uh, Paris edit palette. Um, but I am going to have like a full review of that up on Saturday. Yeah. I'm like really, my days are so mixed up with my head. Okay. So Mac came out with a loud and clear collection. Um, I don't think these are part of the collection, but they have like a glow play. Someone just typed it in here. Someone just typed in, yeah, glow play blushes. Um, and so I got this highlighter from the loud and clear collection. And then I got three of the glow play blushes. So let's take a look at these. Cause I think you guys, you got, from what I can tell, uh, you guys seem to be really excited for this. Um, oh my God, is Samantha March here? Oh my God, hey Samantha. I just was able to meet Samantha March in person. Was that last week? Yeah, last week. And she's just, like if you just think she's like beautiful and sweet on YouTube, wait until you can finally meet her in person because it's like 10 times more so. Amazing. Take me back. <laughs> All right. I've got the MAC blushes here. So I got three colors and of course they look kind of similar in person. I really should have gotten one that was like super bright, but these are the three that I got. Um, let's take a look at this one. This one's cheeky devil. You no, know, I gotta say the packaging is just I just love it. I love this like kind of clear Lucite packaging. I know a lot of people think it looks cheap, like Hourglass when they came out with the ghost packaging, people just hated it. But I, I don't know, I think it looks kind of like modern and cool. This is, you know, it's really light. There's like nothing to it, but I just think it looks nice. So yeah, Cheeky Devil. And it has like a little protective covering on there, which I think I'll keep because I think these are kind of like a cream hybrid. Oh yeah, it feels really creamy. Ooh. Okay, this, it's so hard to swatch blushes because they're so faint, but there's Cheeky Devil. Let me see if I can, hold on. Let me try to build up this blush. Mm. There, maybe, I don't know if you guys can see that. Clinique cheek pops were ahead of che wow cheek pops <laughs> were ahead of the game with the clear packaging totally, and I love those. Yeah, so this one is quite soft. This cheeky devil. If you're, I think if you're any darker than I am, I don't know if this would even show up on your skin tone. It's very very light. Um, let's go for so natural, and this one. This one is the most nude, so let's take a look at this one. Okay, and while I'm opening this up, if you guys wouldn't mind, I hate asking this, but if you guys wouldn't mind thumbs upping, is that a verb? 
thumb, thumb, yeah, thumbs upping this, <laughs> this live stream, I would really, really greatly appreciate it. It just helps to push out this live stream. Okay. So natural. It's pretty. They do have a nice sheen. I feel like this one, I think because the color has kind of a white base, it looks a little matte, but there is like a little bit of something. I think it's just the formula, the creaminess that I'm seeing. Ooh, this one actually feels softer. Can you see I already like made a dent in there? So this So Natural is kind of on the warmer side. I'm gonna just swatch it. Let me do it this way actually. Yeah, and this one's definitely more uh, pigmented. So there is So Natural. Let me get it out of the light a little bit there. That's pretty. Oh, I'm glad I got that one. All right, and then last but not least, this is called Blush Please. Um, thank you guys. Oh, I see a bunch of thumbs up. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, I just got on what is so natural. Is that the one I just, yeah. Okay. So here is, what did I just say? This one is blush. Oh no. Wait, what just happened? Oh, this is so weird. Their labeling is wrong. Wow, I just got really confused. So the first one that I swatched, this light pink one is Cheeky Devil. And that's what it says on the back here. It says Cheeky Devil. And then I just opened up Blush Please. It says Blush Please here on the box. But on the back here, it says Cheeky Devil. I thought I was losing my mind. But this one is Blush Please. This one looks... I don't know if you guys can see. I guess it's the dangers of the clear packaging. Do you see that? It looks like the blush is really crumbly. I mean, I guess with this formula, I'm not surprised. But actually, let me... Wipe off this finger here. All right. So here is blush, please. Ooh, this is such a nice neutral. Ooh, that is really pretty. And the deepest of the three. So this one is Cheeky Devil, I think. Yeah, Cheeky Devil. So natural and blush, please. Oh, Susanna is saying that I'm the second person she has seen where the labels are placed incorrectly. Yeah, Kelly's saying maybe they'll dry out fast. They come with these plastic covers, which normally I toss, but I think I'm going to keep them. If anything, you know, it'll probably help a little bit. So I'm definitely going to hold on to these little covers. Uh, what's the finish on these? They are definitely on the matter side. And, you know, I want to say, though, like, I feel like I see a, a, like a little bit of something, but I think it's just the fact that they're like kind of this cream hybrid. But the actual finish of the product is matte, I want to say. Yeah. Um, I wonder if I should... <laughs> take a pen and actually change the cheeky devil because it's right on the box, but I'm going to throw the box away. So whew, anyway. Um, oh, hi, Robin. How are you? Hi, Wendy. Hey guys. All right. Let me put these little plastic covers back on here. Any, any other questions about these glow play blushes? I want to show you the highlighter that I got. That's part of the loud and clear collection. So I think these blushes are permanent or as permanent as Matt gets. I know they kind of switch up their stuff frequently. Um, Matt blush, Cheer Up is a lovely cool pink. I gotta say, they came out with a wonderful shade range for these blushes. They had a lot of really kind of like bright ones, which would be great for spring, summer. Um, I just wanted to get these neutral ones and just kind of see how I like it, how they wear, how I like the formula and all that stuff before kind of like veering into more, you know, 
colors that I wouldn't use as often. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at Cynthia's comment. Totally thought the collection was a pun at first, like McLeod and Clear. <laughs> um, oh, thank you. Let me know if you want the new By Terry Foundation from Paris. We'll be there next week for my birthday. So the By Terry Foundation, their hyaluronic hydra foundation, I think is what they're calling it. It's like a serum foundation, has a dropper. I just talked about it in my Will I Buy It video. Um, it's actually available on their site. And I just I just haven't been able to get it this week because I ordered this. I ordered all the Chanel stuff. Um, and I ordered something else. Oh, I ordered uh, the new Laura Mercier highlighter, the one that's coming out for their spring collection. It has like the flower embossing on there. So, oh, Eka, thank you so much. Oh, I love that pair. I'm getting a big thumbs up from the pair. Thank you so much. Um, Hey, Shannon, brown girl Bella is here. Hello, what's going on? Um, oh, the Sicily Tinted Moisturizer. So um, Sicily's actually, they're not like sending out um, PR for that, but they said they were gonna send out samples of the light and the medium for me. So I am gonna try that out. And if I like it, I'm definitely gonna order it. I didn't realize I was on Nordstrom already. Um, Hi, Takashi. My friend Takashi is here. Um, oh, thanks, Shannon. Katie Fulton, thank you so, so much. Um, okay, Katie says, hi, Michelle, hello. Sorry, this is kind of random, but I've been dying to know you're my skincare go-to. What's the best eye cream in your opinion? Um, I am loving the uh, Sicily. It's the Eye and Lip Contour Cream. I started using, I was using that day and night and I loved it. And then I was sent the clay de po. I can't remember the full name because it's like one of those, you know, random names. I talk about it in my most recent skincare video, which is actually not that recent anymore. Um, but it's like five recent skincare finds that clay de po. I like actually during the day now because it's just a little bit lighter than the Sicily. So I just feel like it absorbs more quickly. And that's what I like for daytime skincare. Cause I don't want it to interfere with my makeup or anything else. So I like those two very, very much. Um, I can't use the La Mer, um, I, creams. It actually gives me like, uh, I don't know if it's eczema or just a rash or just my skin has a reaction to it. Um, they have an ingredient in there that just doesn't uh, work well with me. So I like the Sicily and, and clay de po. Um, oh my God. <laughs> Yay or nay Nicole is here and which is hysterical because she is actually here in Vegas. So yay or nay Nicole, she has a channel here on YouTube. Please go and follow her. She's amazing. She does over 50 skincare and hair care and makeup. And she's just wonderful. Anyway, she lives outside of San Francisco and she is visiting Vegas and we're actually going to be having breakfast tomorrow. So she just wrote, hi, Michelle, I'm out in front of Bellagio. And I was just at Bellagio for lunch. <laughs> Please tell me you're going to have dinner there. Please tell me you're going to Spago. That would make me so happy. <laughs> um, oh, Freckles is saying clay de po exclamation point. No Melia using it for years. Same. I've been using it pretty consistently now for the past um, month. I want to say month. And it's been, it's been good. Can I ask you guys, when you're watching me, do you still see a black frame around me or am I taking up the whole screen? Because I feel like I, I changed my, yes, you see the black screen. or you see the full screen. I, I, yes to black frame. Gosh, darn it. I don't know what I did. Um, anyway, well, I, I changed lenses and I thought the lens was doing it. Remember when it, this first started? So I changed back to my other lens and I can't believe it's still doing it. Thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> I got it. Yes. Black frame. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let me get the Mac highlighter. So I apologize. It's so annoying because I was watching it on playback and I was like, what the heck? Um, oh my God, Nick is here. The viewer's voice. Hey Nick, how's it going? Oh, I miss you. I feel like I haven't seen you in so long, but it's only been since like November. Can I tell you? And I, I feel like I'm not in the minority here. January, 
January was like three years long that one month. Holy moly. Um, maybe the resolution. Yeah, I didn't, you know, it's like I didn't make any other changes except for that uh, lens. But I think, you know, when you change out lenses, it will change some settings that it has to. And I, they didn't change back. So now I feel like I'm going to just have to play around with it. I'm going to have to play around with it. Thank you so much. Um, January was a beast. It was. But Nick, I'm glad you're here. Miss you. I hope to see you soon. Come to Vegas. Come to Vegas. Let's hang out. Um, oh, Heather. So you're going to be in LV next weekend. Your Tom Ford bag. Okay. Yes. Yes. I, I was just using my Tom Ford bag today. I love it. I really, really love it. Um, oh, Takashi is saying the black frame looks good though. That's because you're a photographer. <laughs> <laughs> you appreciate, you appreciate that. Um, okay. Here is the Mac loud and clear highlighter. So they came out with two and one looked a little bit too pigmented for me. So this is the post modernist peach extra dimension skin finish. And this is so pretty. Let me swatch this. Ooh, this kind of, <laughs> oh yeah. This kind of reminds me of Champagne Pop. <laughs> it's that kind of golden, but peachy kind of color. Can you guys see that? It's really pretty, really, really pretty. It's subtle though, at least my swatch is subtle. I was going to say, maybe I can put some on, but I already have highlighter on. That would be crazy looking. Um, nail color. This is just black. I just go to my lady and I say, give me black. But I have, it's like matte black with glossy black leopard spots. <laughs> so that's it. It's just black. Um, looks like NARS Hot Sands. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think the Hot Sands is quite as peachy as this one. I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera. Let me see if I can do a better swatch here. There, there's a, there's a nice thick swatch for you. So you see how there's like a pretty strong like peach shift? Yeah, like the Hot Sands is such a, just a beautiful like champagne kind of color and Right, doesn't like champagne pop, the Becca one, have like a little peachy, little peachiness to it? Yeah, it is really, really pretty though, I have to say. Uh, Wendy's asking, cream eyeshadow suggestions. Well, I don't know if you guys can see what I'm wearing. I, I put this on like really early this morning, but this is the Tom Ford, the eyeshadow duos. I don't have it anywhere near me, um, but it has the cream on the bottom and has the topper. This is the Fleur Neige color. And I, I really like it. It's kind of, it has that kind of soft moussey texture. It's like the Charlotte Tilbury one. Um, they're softer and moussier than like the Chanel cream shadows. Um, so I like it. They're like easy to work with, but they don't like set down completely. Um, okay. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Hi, Monica. How are you? Sorry, now I'm looking for a makeup wipe. Here we go. And then we can move on to the Viseart palette. I think I saw a bunch of people um, interested in that. Uh, Emily is asking, what is on my lips? I am wearing the Tom Ford. It's actually a mixture of the Philippa color, which is this one. And then the Ava color, which I think I left in my handbag. So Ava's a little bit lighter than this, um, and I put that on, and it was a little too light. So I just layered this on top, and so it's like a mixture of those two. Saks Counter or Sisley Boutique at Crystals. Heather, I got to say, I would recommend the Saks Counter. The ladies there are so nice and so knowledgeable, um, and like the national... I think she's a national sales manager or training manager. She's there often because she lives um, outside of Vegas. She's great. The Sisley Boutique 
you know, they have a lot of stuff. And the lady that helped me was, she was perfectly pleasant, but she, she wasn't like the ladies at sex. They were, they were top notch. Tell them I sent you. They're just really, really lovely. Hey, Lisa, Lisa Bilson is here. Lisa is also another one of my very, very favorite YouTubers here. She just got started. She has a smaller channel. If you guys want to head over to her channel, definitely do so. She, um, just, if you're into luxury makeup, which I'm assuming you are, if you're here, you're going to love her channel. And she's so pretty. <laughs> she's so pretty and lovely to look at and listen to. Um, Lauren is saying the Viseart palette is better in person. All right, let's take a look. So, all right, just want to show you the little card that they sent. Let me see if there's anything. Um, I need to mention Parisian sensibility and the hues found in the iconic Paris nudes palette. Um, blah, blah, blah. The Paris nudes collection is comprised of the Paris edit palette. So I don't know if these, all of these, oh wait. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if the shades in here are similar to the Paris nudes palette or if they just use that as inspiration. I'm not sure. I don't think so. None of these names actually sound familiar, although in their 12 pans, they don't actually name their shades. Anyway, let me just shut up and open this up. Um, yay. Okay. This is just, oh, it's so pretty. Look at this pink. It's like the perfect pink, isn't it? And if you guys are not familiar with these Viseart Edit palettes, they are, they're kind of like these wonderful mini palettes. So they came out with the Petite Pro palettes, which is eight of them. So it's just basically looks like that. And it's like business card size. And then they started coming out with these edit palettes and added like an extra row. And they have mattes and shimmers in there. And, you know, Viseart being a professional makeup brand, they usually kind of separate the two. They usually have, you know, palettes that are all matte, palettes that are all shimmer because pros have to keep them separate. You can't cannot get a shimmer into a matte. But for these, for their, uh, just their consumers, their prosumers like us, they've made these palettes. So isn't that so pretty? Yeah, it looks perfect for spring. I agree. Teresa, asks, uh, Teresa H. is asking, do products like parabens bother you? Do you think they are completely safe? Cladipone SK2 both use methyl parabens. Okay, in your book. I just don't know. I'm not a dermatologist. My skin is quote unquote sensitive, but my skin just doesn't tolerate what it's not going to tolerate. And it tolerates lots of stuff that apparently, you know, bothers sensitive skin. So for me, I've never really had an issue with Cladipone products. SK2 products, I just haven't had a lot of experience with. I think I used their essence a couple of times when it first came out. I mean, we're talking like 15 years ago, um, and I don't even remember. So for me, I, I guess if Clay Depot products have it and I haven't had a reaction to it, then I'm going to say personally, I'm okay with them, but I just don't know. I mean, I feel like you just have to test stuff out. Like people swear by the La Mer um, eye products, the eye concentrate, the eye creams or whatever. And I can't use that. My skin reacts to something in there. And I don't think that they use parabens. So I just think we have to, um, you know, just spot test, spot test stuff um, yourself. You know, I know that's a terribly vague answer, but I just, I just don't know. Okay. So let me go ahead and swatch swatch some of these. These are very, very light shades and very, very close to my skin <laughs> color. So let's see how we do. All right, here are the first four. And, ooh, pretty. Matte shades, as we know, notoriously do not swatch great. They're just not that impressive. You really have to apply them to the eye, but look at that shimmer. So, so pretty. Um, Alyssa is saying, sorry, you know, I'm sorry, Alyssa or Elisa. I am completely messing that up. Um, Carolyn Hirons says, uh, most parabens are fine. 
Okay. And she's pretty knowledgeable. <clears throat> Love and trust Carolyn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, it, this has four shades from Paris nudes. Very, very good to know. Thank you so much. I will have to figure out what those are, but yeah, my palettes are all tucked away over there. Um, okay. So that is the first four. Let me wipe those off. Um, they may not show up on me. Whoa. They may not show up on me. I mean, you know, they may, but they may look kind of ashy. I think that's a possibility, but let's get down to the darker colors here. That first row is probably the lightest. Elisa. Okay. Thank you. Oh my gosh. You're like one of my favorites. And I'm like, I don't know how to pronounce her name. God. <clears throat> okay. Laura, is this palette more cool toned? I would say it's pretty cool toned. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I see like people disagree all the time on what's cool and neutral and blah, blah, blah. To me, this is pretty cool toned. Maybe try to see like what, maybe these two shades at the bottom here are the warmest, but if you cover these two up, that's like pretty cool. All right, let me do this second row here. Ooh. This pink one, this pink mat is very soft. It got really crumbly. All right, here are the next four. So this dark, this dark color, it has little micro glitters in there. I don't even know if you can see that. Let me swatch. Oh yeah. Okay, so second row. And that shimmer is really beautiful. This is the color with micro glitters. And I can see the micro glitters here. I don't know if you guys will see it through the camera. Hello, hello. What's your favorite powder for olive skin? That is hard for me to say since I don't have olive skin. Um, let me know. Uh, Rishu, let me know if you're, if you want something that's has a little bit of coverage. Are you talking about a um, loose powder? Let me know. Oh, Mayak is here. Mayak Tibetan Fibers is here. That is a yarn company that I worked with as often as I could when I was a hand knitwear designer. They are wonderful. If you guys are knitters out there, <laughs> definitely check out their yarn. But hello, hello, Paola. How are you? <laughs> um, uh, Rishi, little setting powder. It's, you know, it's so hard for me to tell on my skin tone whether like how pigmented some of these translucent powders are. But one powder that I really, really love, and I do think that they have darker shades. I don't know if it's going to be as dark as you need is the La Prairie. That is a really beautiful powder and there's like a little bit of coverage in there. And I like using it for setting powder because it's it's matte. Um, it just has an incredibly, incredibly strong fragrance, which is why I don't use it as often as I would like. It's pretty much a deterrent. Um, and also because it, it does have a very kind of like, it will give you a very glam look. And I usually, as you can tell, <laughs> I usually do like more of a natural look. Um, but maybe check that one out. Yeah, Jamie's saying, I love the La Prairie. It buffs so well. Yeah, it's it's really, it's such a beautiful, beautiful powder. Um, what about the Chanel Loose Powder? That one is a good one too. That one is more, I want to say it's more matte. It's a little bit more like basic. It's just like a straight up, loose setting powder. The La Prairie I find just has a little bit of a nicer kind of finish, but Chanel is a great option because I do think they go uh, pretty deep in their powders. Um, La La Prairie, what's your favorite contour? Oh, I'm loving the Scott Barnes contour palette, that one. I, I can't get enough of that palette. All right, let's do the third row down here. 
So Laura, Laura is asking me, how many shades in one palette do you typically use at a time? And do you often layer them or use separately on their own? So, you know, it really depends. I think for me, my comfort zone is around four. And it's almost like when I say that, I realize now why there's so many I quads out there. Um, but I like the idea of four because, you know, I sometimes if there's a really dark a shade dark in there, shade. I'll use um, I'll use it as liner. Um, if there's like mid-tone, then you can use it to add dimension. And then hopefully there's like sparkly colors that you can add like, you know, onto your lid. So I usually go for four. I feel like if I'm going for a really simple look, I'll just stick with two. I'll do like a light color and a dark color. Uh, and that's probably why there's a lot of I duos out there. But that for me is kind of my sweet spot. Of course, when I'm doing reviews and stuff, like when I'm trying to like show you guys a palette, I'll use as much as I can. Um, but for me personally, yeah. Um, and I'll layer them. I'll layer them. <gasps> Kara, you got the Reflex Chanel blush. Yes, and you love it. Isn't it so pretty? It's so, so pretty. I find it to be like a very refined version of like the NARS orgasm. I just love it. Um, oh, thank you, Sophia. She loved my Scott Barnes video. Hello, you. You Chen is here. Hearts, a lot of hearts. Um, okay, let me, let me swatch this last row before I forget. So from what I can tell, there's only four mattes in here and then one matte with the glitters and then the rest have some sort of sheen. So here's the last row. Look at how pretty this like cool toned gray blue is. Those are pretty. Yeah, I think these two shades at the bottom, I think those are the warmest in the palette. So Teresa is asking, um, you have such amazing skin. Thank you. <laughs> Plus you always have beautiful makeup. What are three things that older women with large pores, dry skin can use in terms of having a smooth foundation application? Um, you know, I I talked to my friend Risa of Risa Does Makeup. She has oily skin, but she does have like pores. I don't really have, because I have dry skin generally, um, you don't really have uh, a lot big pores. Um, and she just uses like um, smoothing primers. I think, I think the like pore filling primers maybe going out of style. I feel like I'm just seeing less of like poor, the idea of poor filling. Um, I think maybe there's some bad press around those, but she does like to use like filling primers. Um, I've seen um, like Mel Thompson, I've seen her use the Tatcha Silk Canvas, like right in her areas that she says she has big pores. Her skin looks impeccable on camera. So I, every time she says that, I'm like, I don't see anything. <laughs> but I think she uses that um, right here where she has big pores and then everywhere else, she kind of uses something else. So I think you kind of have to use something smoothing um, like the silk canvas. Um, and then maybe in areas where your pores aren't so big, you can use like a very moisturizing kind of primer. I love the Victoria Beckham one. I love the um, Armani, the glow on, I'm taking it out cause I can't remember the name, but I love this one too. And this one kind of has a Tatcha Silk Canvas like uh, consistency, the Glow On Moisturizing Balm. So it's like a balm. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. This could maybe do both. I don't know how much smoothing it does, but it is great, great, great for dry skin because it's just, it's just like another layer of moisture. And I love this. Absolutely love this. Um, oh, and heavy on the chai, best pore reducing treatment, use niacinamide and exfoliate regularly. Okay. Okay. Um, Hey, Charlie, I have dry skin, combo skin, large pores. Check out Mel Thompson. She uses a Mac pore filler for her large pores and a tart product that fills pores. Oh, awesome. I thought she used the Tatcha Silk canvas. Or maybe she doesn't use that for, she probably uses a bunch of different stuff um, a lot. But yes, I have heard her talk about the MAC pore filler um, often. 
Um, I use the Good Molecules Priming Moisturizer and then smush in, I like that, and then smush in the silk canvas on my nose and cheeks. Okay. Um, all right, so this this one, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, I keep saying I don't know. I don't know if this one will actually be good for pores, but this is great for dry skin. Okay. Let's put that back. All right. Um, oh, okay. Mel, Mel doesn't like the tart anymore. They changed the formulation. That is good to know. I hate when they do that. I hate it. Um, Better Off Red. Hey, girl. Sarah is here. I just did a collab with Better Off Red. If you guys haven't seen it, you may want to check it out if you want to chuckle. It is my out of my comfort zone video. And she does one. Of course, hers isn't funny at all because her look comes out gorgeous, but I don't look so good. Um, I recently used La Mer and Good God, I'm in Trouble. <laughs> I love La Mer. I know it's a very polarizing topic. I know people either love or hate La Mer. Um, I love it. It happens to be very, very good for my skin. Um, thank you, Margie C, four ninety nine. Thank you so, so much. Um, what's the best shimmer for mature eyelids um, for brightening? No chunks. Um, I would say you just want to stay away from, like you said, anything that's too glittery, too chunky, too shiny. I mean, the more shiny it is, the more it is going to emphasize things. Um, you, I don't know if you're opposed to cream shadows, but I happen to really like cream shadows for more mature eyelids. I don't know if it's because it's, it's a cream and it kind of, I don't know, doesn't act like a moisturizer, but I just think it looks really smooth. I'll say that. I think it looks really, really smooth. And so if you use a cream shadow, like this is the Tom Ford one. I have a little bit of the topper on, but I think these look really, really nice on mature eyelids, the Tom Ford and the Charlotte Tilbury, because they have a really nice kind of like moussey, soft kind of consistency. They apply beautifully. And even though they don't sit down completely, like mine doesn't move or fade at all. Um, so I'm a big fan, big, big fan. Oh, bye, Samantha. Oh, have fun. Good luck with your vanity. That's exciting. Um, okay. Kathy is saying she loves the Tom Ford cream shadows. Yeah. And they just have this nice kind of like satin finish, but they're not glittery. Um, they don't have, uh, like particles in them. I feel like the particles is what makes or emphasizes texture. Um, Michelle, try that Clarence concealer. Okay. Clarence. Okay, Margie's saying, what about powder shimmers? Not a big cream person. Um, I Yeah, again, I would just stick with ones that don't have a lot of chunk to them. The Viseart ones, I mean, it's sitting out here, so I can say that their satins are smooth. And um, because Viseart, again, because they're a pro makeup shop and they really gear their products towards makeup artists who work on film and TV, they can't have super bright eyeshadow. That's like the last thing you want to see through a lens. So their shimmers are very, very smooth and on the more subtle side. So um, if you like, um, like their 12 pans, um, those are the ones that are for pros. These are a little, like the shimmers that they make for us, the consumers are a little bit brighter, but they're 12 and like their Paris nudes. Um, and then they have like a bridal satin one. Those are so gorgeous. They're so smooth. And they're just this really subtle, pretty kind of like satin. I would recommend, um, I would recommend those. Um, Gita is recommending the Tom Ford Bake Shadows. Those are also really smooth. I totally agree. Those, some of those will have like little bits in there, but you can probably get away with them because it is such a smooth, beautiful formula. Um, the Charlotte Tilbury Quads are are really beautiful and her satins are smooth also. And they don't really have, she has some topper shades in there, but her satin shades are very, very smooth also. Um, what else? I think a lot of the other ones have a little bit too much going on. Like the Pat McGrath ones, her special baked ones, super glittery, super crazy. And then even her like really creamy satin ones, those are like have such a high shine to them that I feel like maybe that wouldn't work. So I hope that, I hope that helped. Um, Oh, Cindy's asking, what shade did you order in the Laura Mercier highlighter? I got the lighter one. I don't remember. 
the name addiction. <laughs> All the names are so like salacious. It's either like addiction or something. It's the lighter one. There's two that I saw a lighter one and a deeper one. So I got the lighter one. Um, oh, my favorite Charlotte Tilbury quad. So it's, it's mixed. I really like the sophisticate because that's just a great basic one, but that's like an older quad. Um, but I really, really like her new, the rebel. She changed up her formula and it is fantastic. It makes me want to get the other quad that she came out with, uh, uh, when she came out with the rebel, of course, I can't remember the name. Um, and I was totally going to pass on all of the pillow talk palette that she came out with, but they're saying it's like the newer formula also. And I'm like, ah, maybe I'll get that too. Um, Oh, shoot. Um, hold on. I just like hid a message that I did not mean to. Oh, God. <laughs> Yolanda, I'm sorry. Wait, view. Sorry. Um, what was the first palette you ever bought? Okay. I think the first palette I ever bought was my sophomore year in college. And it was a Chanel quad that they do not make anymore. It was all mats because this was back in 92. So like the whole matte grunge look was really in and it was all mats and I cannot remember the name of it or anything. And it is long gone, <laughs> uh, but it had like this really pretty pink in there and like this really like taupey Brown. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I use that thing to death. Um, oh, Lisa, you love the new Pillow Talk palette. Okay. Okay. I guess I'm getting it. <laughs> the Pillow Talk big palette is great quality. Yeah. I mean, like she did something. She did something to her shadows. And I was like, what just happened? When I played around with the Rebel, you know, I wasn't expecting much. I just really liked the colors. I thought it was just going to be like Charlotte Tilbury status quo. But I was like really, really wowed. Um, oh, well, thank you, Irina. That's very nice of you. <laughs> thank you. Um, Debbie, love my Blendiful. Oh, you know, I've been playing around with the Blendiful. I think I'm going to use it like in a trying new makeup. I'm just trying to form like more of an opinion because it's, I'm like, it's nice. I like it, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know that I like it more than my sponge or I like it more than my brushes, but I will say awesome. I'm sorry. I only have the small one. The big one is actually by my sink. Cause I've been trying to like wash it and play around with it. Um, great for travel. I think instead of carrying all these brushes, like great for travel. So yeah. Anyway, I will say that about the blendiful. Um, did you pan that Chanel palette? I think I panned that one like light peachy pink color. I panned that because I would just put that all over my lid. But I really didn't make like wear that much makeup in college um, or even after college because I had such bad eczema. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Rin Nonya. I'm sorry if I completely slaughtered that. Um, what is your hair routine? It always um, so beautiful. So I'm going to do a hair routine uh, video, but I just, I wash it. Um, I use a Sicily scalp serum. I put that, you know, along my scalp. I rub that in. Um, I've talked about that scalp serum like a gazillion times, but I absolutely love it. Um, and then I put in like an Orbe Balm Dor. Uh, it's like a heat protectant. And then I just, I just blow dry it. That's it. I don't brush my hair. I kind of just like run my fingers through it. And when it looks like this, that's all I've done. Um, sometimes I'll curl it or whatever. And when I curl it, I will put some like additional oil in my hair. Sometimes I will put oil in my hair if it just is starting to look a little coarse, if it's too staticky. I'll use like um, the Sicily hair oil. I love, I used to use the Orbe hair oil, but that one was thick and I would more often than not put in too much and I would have like stringy gross hair. The Sicily is a little bit lighter and I feel like I can't mess up with that oil. It's just, it's so, so nice. Um, so that's, that's really it, but I am going to do a hair care video and like talk about the actual products that I love, uh, soon. And then I'm going to do like, a how I curl my long hair video. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, 
favorite brand of natural hair brushes. Uh, I have two favorites. No, I have three. <laughs> I have three favorites and for, for different reasons. Um, okay. People are talking about hair stuff. Okay. Um, I love Sonia G. Sonia G uh, just makes really, really unique shapes. Um, they're beautiful. They're just impeccably made. And I just really, really appreciate how different the shapes are. Um, so that's why I love Sonia G and she uses such high quality hair. So they're just really soft. Um, and so I, I just, I really, really love them. Um, the other brand I wanted to mention was Isam. I like their natural um, eye brushes. So these, because they use sable hair brushes, which is very, very hard to find. And sable hair just lays down color so smoothly and beautifully. So like for shaders, they're just awesome. And they just work great with powder products. They work great with uh, cream products. They work great with... Um, What did I just say? Cream powder. And then those like, uh, like glittery kind of like hard to handle shadows. Sable is so good because they have, um, a larger follicle. So they actually pick up more product. Um, really great. And then I love refer refer brushes are just so good. All of them use undyed goat hair. So you can use all of their brushes with, um, liquid, uh, with cream, with, uh, powder and their shapes are a little bit more traditional, you know, like a round powder brush. Um, like this is their bronzer brush. This is their 22 brush. Um, this is their blush brush, you know, just like their shapes are a little bit more traditional than Sonia G's. So these are kind of like, for me, like natural hair, like workhorse brushes. I just, I just really, really love them. Oh, thank you. Shady for higher X <laughs> says that my uh, brushes are wonderful. Thank you so much. So I have um, a curated brush set um, collaboration with Isam. Um, those are the stable hair brushes that I mentioned. So it's six eye brushes and there's some sable hair, some goat hair, and then there's one synthetic hair brush in that set. Um, and that is available through Valentine's Day. So if you guys want to get my brush set, <laughs> definitely check out Muse Beauty Pro. Um, and my most recent videos have a link to them, uh, which would be great if you use that, but no pressure, absolutely no pressure. It's an affiliate link, no pressure. Um, Heather, Heather is saying, I bought four Sonia G brushes last week. They are amazing, game changer. I agree, I agree. This brush completely changed my makeup game. I know it's so innocent looking, but this was the first fan brush that I really got on with. And it's just perfect right here. Just blend in. How, uh, bronzer like along your forehead. It just blends it right in. You don't even have to move your arm. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> pressure there, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Um, uh, okay, sorry, what's, what's, what's going on? Oh, Jennifer, I'm on a no buy too. Oh no, you know what? It's all good. You guys, anyone who wants to do no buy, anyone wants to do, to do a low buy, just do it. There's so much makeup that comes out all the time. And like that palette that you're dying for today, you're going to forget about by next week because there's going to be 10 more that comes out. So just, just, just be good. Just be good. And yeah, yeah, there's absolutely no reason to break your, your no buys for sure. Um, thoughts on Scott Barnes brushes. I like them. I really like... Oh, they're being washed. <laughs> I feel like I need like a brush management system. Um, they're over by my sink and ready to be washed. Um, they're heavy. The face brushes, I really, really like them, but they're really, really heavy. So I don't mind using them here, but like I would never travel with them. I'm surprised that he like he I'm sure he puts them in his kit and uses them in his kit. Um so that's one thing. And I definitely like his face brushes more than the eye brushes. And I feel that way when it comes to synthetic hair brushes, I always get on with the face brushes just fine. The eye brushes, I feel like his brushes are lovely, but next to like, you know, an Isam Sable hairbrush, 
I'm going to, I'm going to reach for my natural hair brushes. Um, but if you're like a synthetic hair lover, maybe you don't like natural hair bristles or whatever. They're lovely. His blending brush is very nice. Is very, very nice. Um, how do you pack your brushes for travel? So I use brush guards. That's these little nets here. And I talk about this in my like brush cleaning video. And then I pack them in. Oh, I thought maybe I had it out. No, it's the Esom brush book. So it's this like semi hard, like zip around case. It opens up and it has all of these slots for brushes. And then the other side has this like clear opening you could put makeup in. Love it. I love that brush book. I think I have three at this point. Yeah, I think I have three at this point. Um, I've only ever used two at, at the same time. So I don't know why I have three. Um, so yeah. Um, but why do you know? It's like trying to switch. Can I tell you, I quit smoking living with two chain smokers. Uh, so it can be done. Um, I pluck my eyebrows. They always look so cut and shaped nicely. Wow, thank you, Elizabeth. I hate my eyebrows. You may think differently if you ever saw me in person. They're, um, the hairs are long, so I have to trim my eyebrow hairs like once a week. Like they grow longer than anything else on my body. Um, grow faster than anything else on my body. And then I just, you know, I just use a Tom Ford fiber brow gel because it fills in like the bald spots and it keeps it in place and it makes the hairs look, you know, thicker or whatever, but not too much. It's not too crunchy or whatever. So I love it. <laughs> well, thank you. You, you were saying that she'll move in and be my brush manager. I really need it. I think I'm going to do like a cleaning my room vlog again, because it looks if you guys watched the one, I think I put up, did I put it up during Mishmas or before? Anyway, it was fairly recently, maybe a couple months ago at most. My room looks like worse, like 10 times worse than that particular cleaning bog. So I need to do it again and I may as well film it for you guys. I think you, uh, you guys enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> Lauren, haha. Uh -huh. Michelle Wong made me. All right. We've got uh, three more minutes here. I'm going to sign off at six o'clock. Any other, uh, questions. How long does it take for you to do your everyday makeup? My every, my everyday makeup, probably like 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, I want to say. Yeah. Uh, Michelle Rollins is asking me, speaking of Mishmas, how did you film all of that? It was a beast. And it wouldn't have been so bad if I didn't take a week vacation. So I had to pre-film that entire week and then and like get home and then like keep it rolling. Um, it was a lot. It was a lot. I was working a lot and I didn't even, I didn't get started that early, like pre-filming for December. Like I should have started at the beginning of November and I just didn't, I started maybe like after Thanksgiving, like the last few days of November. And it was, it was crazy. It was crazy. I was like editing like four videos in a day and it was just, it was just a lot. I don't know if I'll do that again. Um, but it, you know, it ended up being a lot of fun. And by the time it was over and I did the live stream on the last day, like it was, I don't know, it was like, it was cool. And it was a fun challenge that I kind of forced on myself. And, um, and I was like, yes, I could do it. It nearly broke me, but I could do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Oh, well, thank you, Michelle. Oh, Ralph Johnson is here. Ralph, how are you? Ralph um, Ralph slips me a lot of information a lot of the time. Um, only can have one skincare product, one complexion product, one color product. Go. Okay. It's probably going to take up the rest of the time. One skincare product, it would be my La Mer. Any of them. The cream, the soft cream, the moisturizing lotion, any of those. Um, I really can't. I can't live without that. One complexion product. Um, I think it's the Surratt, the Surratt Dewdrop Foundation. That was my best of 2019. Um, and I think I would stick with that because it just has such a lovely sheen and it is like light coverage. Um, you could definitely build it up to like, kind of like a heavier light medium, um, which is like 
great for me. Um, and one color product. Okay, I'm debating between like a blush and a lip product because me without blush, I look like a corpse, like an absolute corpse, but you can't just wear blush. <laughs> so maybe, I don't know, maybe like a lip gloss, like I would do like, it's kind of like a nice nude lip gloss, some sort of lip gloss. I think I would do some sort of lip gloss and that would be it, I think. Um, blush. Okay. Lauren is saying blush lip product. You can use it for blush too. That's true. So smart. <laughs> that is true. Sonia G brush restock. I have no idea. You know, she's at the mercy of these artisans in Japan. And I mean, they're, they're so sweet and they work their fingers to the bone, but you just don't know. You just don't know like how quickly they can, um, make the brushes. So I have no idea, unfortunately, on Sonia G restock. Um, maybe a cream blush for blush and lips. Yeah. Lip gloss, the pink one. Yeah. My 804, the Chanel 804. It's just legendary. Um, lipstick can be used on your cheeks. Yep. It can. You guys are right. All right, guys, it is six o'clock. Oh, this was so much fun. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. I miss doing live streams. So hopefully I can kind of get back into the swing of, into the swing of things. Wow. I need dinner. Hopefully I can get back into the swing of things soon. And yeah. Yeah. And hopefully I'll be able to do live streams more often. Maybe not weekly, but like every two weeks or so. Have you guys missed me a little bit? <laughs> I will kiss the puppy. She's right here. She's still gnawing on her bully stick. She's so cute. Right, baby? All right, guys. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks, everyone. Bye. See you next time. Bye, Abby. See you next time.